Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to talk about the four things that came across my desk on Monday. Um, celebrating MLK Day. So these are the things that came across my desk in the last 24 hours that I felt to be nose, I'm sorry, newsworthy. And um, let's just get into it. First thing, the Baltimore Ravens held a practice in M&T Bank Stadium Saturday. Harbaugh talked about they wanted to get into the routine. They wanted to get into the fact that they, they drive to the games on home games anyway. So they drove from a one winning drive in Owen Mills all the way down to the stadium in Baltimore. And they wanted to kind of stay in routine similar to what a game week would be like. They wanted to keep it business as usual. Let's take a listen to what Harbaugh had to say about the stadium practice. I thought it was really good, Jerry. I mean, we had an uh, hour and a half practice. Uh... You know, we were running around fast, timing, execution, good spirits. It was cold and windy, uh, and we had a sense of the stadium. I think it was good to get in there psychologically, you know, just to feel that. You know, just even driving down to the stadium, you kind of felt like, oh, it's like a game, you know. That's what we do. We drive to the stadium for our home games. All of that, to me, helped us stay kind of uh, psychologically in the right place. Next up, we've had some roster moves that come across my desk lately. Uh, well, not lately, but t this afternoon. Laquan Treadwell has been waived. Uh, he was in his eighth season out of Ole Miss. He had one catch for 16 yards this year. And really, he was the, the sixth receiver on the team anyway. He was even behind Tylen Wallace. So the fact that we passed on him or put him, you know, waived him to make room for other guys, kind of understandable. Put Pepe back on IR, uh, Demarion Williams. I don't really know what's wrong with Pepe. I don't, I didn't see him get injured. In the last game, he was the punt returner toward the end of the Steelers game, the last game we had. So I'm not really sure why he's on IR, but he's back on IR. And he's been on IR more than he's been on the field. But the good news is, the good news is, that clears up two roster spots for two names. One name being Davin Cook. This makes way for the potential of Davin Cook actually playing in the game Saturday. And we'll talk about that in a little bit in a minute. Um, and Mark Andrews, who we saw practice uh, last week. So maybe we get two stars back on the, well, I can say two stars. Well, Davin Cook is a star. Uh, over 1,100 yards of pass three. He's still a star. He just didn't get opportunity to play that much this year because he was behind Brees Hall. So we get two stars back for the playoff game. And hopefully we can come out and, and be hitting on all cylinders and have our best 53-man roster possible at this time of year. Next up, Harbs also talked about the closeness of this team. Said he hadn't been around a team that's been this close in a long time. He talked about the genuine love in the locker room that they seem to have for each other. He also mentioned that how they hang out together and be around each other outside of the facility. Let's take a listen to what Harbs had to say about the closeness of the team. I just think and believe, I believe that this is one of the most connected teams I've ever been around, you know, and I think it starts with the fact that I really believe they love one another. You know, I think they have uh, a, a kind of a spiritual connection that uh, runs through the whole team. I think the guys, like, you can just tell when a group of people like being around one another, like working together, trust one another, believe in one another, and, uh, and want to see everybody succeed. You know, the idea that if one of us succeeds, we all succeed. I, I see that with this group. It's much more than any other team that I've been around in you know 40 plus years of coaching. So uh, that's that's a real a real joy to be around, and it's a reflection of all the people that are involved. It's a reflection of all the different individuals that go up to make the, the group, the culture, whatever you want to call it, the environment, uh, the worldview that they take on the challenges that are in front of them. And and I'm just I'm, I admire everybody in, in those seats that sit right there in our team meeting. I admire every single person sitting in those seats. And lastly, I alluded to it a little earlier, but the Steelers and the Bills game has now ended, and that's what I was kind of waiting on. We will be playing the Houston Texans Saturday at 4, I think it's at 4.30 Saturday. We play the first game Saturday. Um, I've been doing some study on the Houston Texans myself, kind of like the Ravens were doing. I'm about finished with that, and I'll publish some information on that uh, in the next couple of days, and it's like tendencies and formations and different things that I saw that I think we can take care of, take advantage of offensively. Now I know I 
not have studied like they have because they're football all the time. I'm football some of the time. But um, whatever findings I have, I'll share with you guys in, video, in the form of videos with some video evidence to kind of support my claims. And we just talk about it in the chat box or in the comment section. So those are the four things that came across my desk on Monday, January 15th. I want to say thank you for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate you guys. Hit that like button. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. And hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of this content drops for this playoff run that we are about to embark on. Thank you guys, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.